Hello all, and happy December. Seeing as how a bunch of new titles launched last month, I thought I was going to just cruise on those until December 10th hit, when a good portion of the gaming community would drop what they're doing to focus on Cyberpunk 2077. Make no mistake, I already cleared my schedule for that. That is until last week when I discovered that a quote unquote new game was coming out based on a game I had already played the hell out of and loved. That game is Kronos Before the Ashes, an action adventure dungeon crawling prequel to August 2019's Remnant from the Ashes, developed by Gunfire Games and published by THQ Nordic. In my effort to describe this game thoroughly and not overlook any details, I will talk about it as if you, watching this video right now, have never played Remnant from the Ashes. If you have in fact played it, I'll try to keep the redundancy to a minimum. If you have never played Remnant, one, what in the hell's the matter with you, and two, I will link both the gameplay and the breakdown I did for Remnant in the description so you can get up to speed on things. Now, Kronos Before the Ashes, as the name suggests, and as I already said, takes place before the events of Remnant. After you go through the gaming world's shortest character creator, an old lady with the look of some kind of tribe elder tells you the tale of the Scouring, basically breaking down how humanity got to this point. There used to be buildings, and people, lots of people. Magical tree demons popped up and started handing out elves to humanity. Turns out the magical tree demons are being led by a dragon. Once a year, a giant redstone powers on which is able to transport you to the realm where the dragon resides. Now according to her, since you're the strongest and smartest of the tribe, it's your job to track down the dragon and kill him, or die trying. That's an awful lot of faith to have in an 18 year old. The dungeons that you'll go through all have the look and feel you'd expect, from vacant ruins to rusty laboratories and other areas you might find familiar if you played Remnant. You'll spend a good amount of time exploring each area, searching for new weapons and solutions to puzzles, all while fighting off ninja dwarves, tribal goat people, and whatever other weird shit you come across. There's no mini-map in Kronos, so it's up to you to keep track of where you go, where you've been, and where the hell is that locked door I just saw earlier? Every so often you'll come across a big red stone called a world stone. Activate these when you see them, and they will allow you to fast travel to and from any other world stones you've activated. Which is great, because your running speed is not the best. An integral part of each area are puzzles. They're not even medium difficulty. Some you just have to find a missing item to, and some have parts you have to arrange in a certain order so they won't slow you down much. Until you get to the one in the labyrinth. I lost like 45 minutes on that one, largely due to yelling at the screen. Anyway, key items don't have some fancy beam of light shining up off them, so you really have to keep an eye out. If you're moving too fast, you can easily miss something. Sometimes the way through a door or a puzzle will require multiple somethings. If you find two key items that may go together, you can open your inventory and combine the two to make the complete item you need to do what you gotta do. These puzzles make me happy because sometimes there's stuff behind them and I like stuff. Now, Remnant had a bigger focus on guns, but melee was still part of the combat equation, with you being able to switch between aiming or firing your weapon to swinging your melee weapon pretty quickly. In Kronos, the mechanics are much different. Combat always comes down to how well you can use your weapon and your shield. If an enemy uses ranged attacks, just dance around it and close the distance, or turtle your way up to them with your shield. Just remember that defending takes stamina, so be careful with that. You can also parry with the shield, so hopefully you're good at timing, because I am not. Weapon swings feel a little sluggish, but as I said, getting your timing down and making the most of it when enemies leave themselves open to attack is the number one way to get through this game. Killing enemies nets you XP, which lets you level up, and drop two points into one of four stats. Strength, which affects strength-based attack damage, blocking, and defense. Agility, which affects agility-based attack, evasion, and defense. Arcane, which affects arcane-based damage and defense against arcane attacks. And Vitality, which affects your maximum health and defense. Then we get to the fun stuff. When you take damage, you've got two options. Be careful until you level up, which restores your health to full every time or use one of your Dragon Hearts, a replenishable healing item you can find more maximum uses for as you explore. In Remnant, Dragon Hearts recharge every time you rested at a World Stone, took no time to activate, could be kinda used while moving, and you could dodge cancel the animation if need be. In Kronos, Dragon Hearts can only be used standing completely still, take forever to activate, leave you wide open to attack, and only recharge when you die. Yeah. It's a pain in the ass. Now, this is where your character's age actually means something. When you die in Kronos, your character ages by one year, up to a maximum of 80, with varying appearance changes automatically happening down the line. I beat the game at around age 33, so I can't show you footage of me whooping ass as a grandpa. When you are young, your strength and agility are at their peak. 
When you get older, obviously you won't be giving enemies the boot or puffing your chest out to bosses, but your arcane damage and effectiveness of your dragon stones will increase. Dragon stones are special items gained from defeating the dragon's guardians, and they grant special power to your charged heavy attacks, dodge counterattacks, and parry counterattacks. Your currently equipped dragon stone gains power every time you do damage to enemies, and once the gauge is full, you can unleash its power. The first one you come across imbues your weapons with fire and increases your attack speed for a time, giving you just the edge you need to get the upper hand on a particularly tough enemy or annoying boss. Starting at age 20, every 10 years you get to pick one of three new character traits to help you out on your journey. The effects of these traits may change when your character gets older, so be extra careful which ones you pick since they cannot be changed later. Oh, before I forget, weapons and armor. I was extremely sad to find out that there are no armor sets in Kronos since the best thing to go with new weapons is new armor. There are 6 weapons to find, 7 if you count both swords, and they can be upgraded a maximum of 5 times each via dragon shards dropped by enemies. Lastly, there are 3 shields to collect, but no way to upgrade those. Now, I would never lie to you guys, this game has a long way to go if it's to be anything noteworthy. Combat or general gameplay in Kronos feels slow and clunky more often than not, and it largely has the appearance of an unfinished concept. I didn't expect a lot for $30, but having played Remnant, and this game being extremely closely related to it, I definitely expected more than this. To anyone who played Remnant, you've probably expected Remnant's somewhat quick flow of combat, just minus all the ranged options, and I expected the same. If the devs initially went to do that, but felt like that was too easy or Kronos might appear as a simple cash grab, I would understand. Still, the better route would have been a melee only special DLC add-on to Remnant. At least then this would all appear as a finished product. I finished the game at around 6 or 7 hours, and there are a handful of areas each taking maybe an hour to progress through. I still kind of enjoyed the game because it's in the genre I enjoy the most. Give me a sword and shield, drop me into a dungeon, and I will explore to my heart's content. With a bit of light research, the only kind I do, it looks like there was a 2016 Oculus Rift VR title called Kronos, and it appears identical to Kronos Before the Ashes in every way, which I guess would make Remnant From the Ashes a sequel? Which if I'm being honest, just makes it that much more disappointing that Kronos Before the Ashes isn't better than it is. But I digress. If you would like to see a gameplay video or video of me fighting all the bosses in the game, both of those will be available in the description down below. Kronos Before the Ashes is available on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Google Stadia, and the Microsoft Store for $30, but I would either wait for a sale to pick it up or wait for the devs to hopefully put out a handful of patches or content updates. Now, next time you all hear from me, it will be about Cyberpunk 2077. A thrice delayed but still very much awaited game that I am excited as hell to play. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. This has been Cygnus Jason, and I will catch you all on the game side. Later.